This video is for those of you who are fixed wing pilots going for a helicopter add-on. And the question came in overnight, referenced the video I did yesterday about the ACS and the PTS and taking check rides and knowing the information of PTS. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm Kenny Keller with Helicopter Line Ground School. I tried going live this morning and it, and it was horrible. After it rendered, it didn't come out, so I'm doing it again. I'll post this later today. It's cook with Kenny now, I guess. I, I do this video daily, drinking coffee, and coffee's done, gone. Video didn't work out, so I'm shooting it again. Hey, electronics, that's what happens. So in this question, here's what this guy says, okay? Member says. He said, I'd like to ask you a couple specific questions regarding the topic. Again, back to the PTS and ACS. If you're a fixed-wing pilot and doing a helicopter add-on, how do you handle if the examiner asks you questions during the oral portion regarding a topic from the PTS that is not part of the knowledge requirements for the add-on. I always say, anything's fair game. For example, he says, he, she asks you questions about hypoxia. I've been told by some instructors that you can reply by pointing out to the examiner that his or her question isn't part of the knowledge required for the add-on. I personally wouldn't do that. I've never told a, a student in 20 years to do that. I guess you could, but I, I personally, I wouldn't recommend it. The last thing I want to do is piss off the examiner early on in the oral portion. Exactly. You know, the examiner's there to evaluate your knowledge. I think he can ask you anything that he wants. I think anything's fair game. And I, some examiners might not bother, but some it might. So I wouldn't recommend it. And to take it one step further, what if they ask you to describe in detail all of the different items of Hypoxia, for example, when the PTS doesn't go into that level of depth for knowledge of hypoxia. Thanks again for the help of this topic and for the great daily videos. Thank you for the question. It's a great question, and I want to hear your, your uh, comments down below. Any of you that have taken a check ride or instructors or even if there's an examiner's checking in, tell us down uh, downstairs, down the, in the comments below, how you would feel if a student asked you this or an applicant asked you this during a check ride. You know, again, these videos, they're my opinion. I'm going off of what I've known and I've done for the last 20 years. I would never recommend a student do that. When I'm prepping people for add-ons, I just say, hey, anything's fair game. I know for a fact, probably 50% of my... Um, people I've sent for check rides in the last 20 years have been add-ons. What I know for a fact is the one examiner I've used for 20 years, first thing he does, pulls out a VFR chart, starts asking VFR stuff questions on a chart for an add-on. Um, a lot of guys who say fly a lot of instrument stuff doing a, an add-on, their VFR skills fall behind, okay? So I always tell people anything's fair game. When you're doing an add-on, let's say for the private pilot level, you're a private pilot. So you're expected to have your private pilot knowledge at all times and use an example of hypoxia. You know, could hypoxia get you killed? Sure, if you didn't understand it or you forgot how it happens and the signs of it and, and how to, um, you know, what to do in the event you recognize the signs of hypoxia. So I think anything is fair game. That's my opinion. That's what I've always told people. I'm going to give you two examples real quick. I had a CFI fixed wing doing a commercial add-on and when I talked to the examiner about meeting for the check ride he said hey have your uh, applicant figure a, a two-leg cross country from where you're leaving to here and then from here to point C and the student was an awesome student he didn't complain he just said okay I'll do it it's not in the PTS that he needed to do a cross-country flight plan for that commercial check ride did I question the examiner? No. He asked for it. We did it and we delivered it. Another example that's a really good one, a good friend of mine, I was prepping for a private add-on, fixed wing to helicopter, and he had recently done his flight review in the fixed wing. So when we were doing our or preparation for the oral test, he's like, well, I already know that. I'm a, I'm a fixed wing pilot. I'm a private pilot. I already know that. I'm like, well, I know, but I want to go over these things with you. You know, I'll brush up some of this knowledge. I'm good on all that stuff. Just ask me the, the helicopter stuff, you know, the meaty helicopter stuff. So we did that, and then he struggled through the oral portion. 
And during that oral, the examiner even came out and said, what's wrong with your boy in the other room? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, he's really struggling. And I'm asking him some basic VFR stuff that he's struggling on. You know, and I just kind of shook my head. Well, he made it through the check ride, but then after the fact, he calls me and he says, Kenny, I want to tell you this as your friend one time, and I'll never mention it again. Next time you send somebody for an add-on, make sure they know all the VFR stuff. Make sure they know everything a private pilot needs to know. And I'm like, uh, do, buddy, do you remember that I kind of told you that and how you kind of brushed me off when I was talking about brushing up all the private pilot stuff? So there's two examples of things that's went on in check rides, real life examples of where I think your knowledge needs to be at the private pilot level, even in an add on. And I just personally don't think it's a good idea to point out to the examiner what he can and can't ask you. I just don't recommend it. That's my opinion. Again, I'd like to have your uh, feedback below on what you think about that. You know, do you think it's acceptable? What's your opinion? Hopefully, maybe an examiner or two will come across this video and, and, and they'll you know put a comment down below how they would feel if an applicant stated that to them. I don't think most examiners would probably like it. So hopefully that helps with answer that question. I'm Kenny Keller, creator of Helicopter Land Ground School. I'm going to put the link down below for helicopterground.com. I started this 30 days ago doing videos on a nice day. Last week we had sub-zero temperatures today. I'm like, oh my God, 30 days later for the daily video, I got to get outside and do this outside. So the link down below for helicopterground.com. We have private commercial instrument CFI. Those you can get as a monthly or a yearly option. You get 24-hour test flight with those two options, monthly and yearly. You can go and check out the training for 24 hours. If you're not 100% happy, remove your credit card information from the site or go to PayPal and remove and end the subscription in PayPal before the 24 hours is up. We part as friends. You're welcome back anytime. Then we have a big professional pilot package. Everything, private, commercial, CFI, and, and um instrument all in one package that's unlimited doesn't expire that one doesn't have the test flight but that does have a 30-day 100 percent ironclad no hassle money back guarantee meaning you have 30 days to check out the training at any point during that 30 days if you decide it's not what you're looking for you ask for a simple refund request and i refund your money that's it i don't hassle you i don't hound you i don't ask you why didn't you like it and you don't have to explain you just hey it wasn't wasn't what i was looking for right now or just say refund. I like refund, please. That's it. I refund, move on with my day, and that's it. Part as friends. We have, we have people that have canceled a membership or refunded because their instructors told them, oh, you don't need that helicopter ground school stuff. I, I, I'll get you ready. And then they've, pat, they've went and failed a check ride. I've had two people do this. And they emailed me back and said, Kenny, I failed my check ride. Now I want, I want to try ground school again. <laughs> so that happens in the real world. So subscribe to the channel if you'd like to uh, be notified of our daily videos and other videos on training announcements and all kinds of different helicopter-related subjects, training and uh, flight and ground. So subscribe, click the bell when you do that so that you will be notified of those videos. Make sure you put your comments down below. Please give us a thumbs up, and we shall see you in the next video.